Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks on the legislation and to insert extraneous material on H.R. 497. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 497, the Freedom for Healthcare Workers Act, introduced by my Energy and Commerce Committee colleague, Representative Duncan. I want to start by making one thing clear. I believe in the safety and effectiveness of vaccines. I'm a physician. I'm pro-vaccine. At the same time, I'm a conservative, and I believe in individual choice. It is my firm conviction that, what, that whenever possible, the federal government should leave decision-making to state or local authorities. Additionally, my background in medicine has formed my belief that medical decisions are extremely personal and should be made by individuals in consultation with their doctors. So at the end of 2021, when the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services announced a decision to mandate that healthcare workers receive a COVID-19 vaccine to remain employed, I opposed the decision. I believe this move by the Biden administration to be unnecessary, inappropriate, and a net harm to our health care system as a whole. That is why, my with my colleague Vern Buchanan and I, we led a letter with 113 other members outlining our opposition to the mandate and our concerns. I ask unanimous consent to insert this letter into the record. Without objection. The move was unprecedented. CMS does not impose such a mandate for any other vaccine. Furthermore, the vaccine, while effective at preventing severe disease and death, is not shown to totally prevent transmission of the virus. It was difficult, if not impossible, to reconcile the rationale for implementing a mandate like this. At the tail end of the pandemic, while we as a nation are struggling to staff hospitals, physician offices, and other ancillary providers, our nation's health care system was already facing a growing health care work workforce shortage including a projected physician shortage of more than 100,000 by 2034. I was worried, and indeed we saw it play out, that implementing a federal vaccine mandate would only serve to exacerbate the problem. For example, in my home state, Indiana University lost 125 employees as a re direct result of the vaccine requirement. And that's just one small example. Thousands of individuals across the country either resigned or were let go due to this mandate. Now, over a year later, despite several lawsuits rising through the courts questioning the validity of this exact rule, the Biden administration continues to enforce this mandate. Today's bill does what the Biden administration will not. It ends the onerous mandate imposed by the federal government agency on the American people. It provides important autonomy to health care workers and critical relief to hospitals and other facilities who continue to face staff shortages. My Democratic colleagues will say that this mandate was worth it, that repealing it will hurt health care workers or patients they serve. I haven't seen any data to suggest that. What we do know is that 95 percent of Americans have either been vaccinated or had COVID-19. We know the vaccine no longer totally prevents transmission of COVID-19. CMS's vaccine mandate won't end with a public health emergency on May 11th or sooner if our bill, the previous bill that we just uh, debated goes into law, it will go on indefinitely unless the administration rescinds it or Congress takes action. Given that the administration threatened to veto this legislation, it doesn't seem like they plan to reverse course. So Congress must step in. We're not taking away anyone's ability to get vaccinated. Healthcare workers can and should protect themselves, including get, getting vaccinated if they choose nor are we taking away the ability of individual health systems to make decisions about what vaccinations they may require. For instance, many health care systems have required employees to get a flu shot for many years. The federal government simply shouldn't demand they do so. Federal bu bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. do not know the needs of Hoosiers in my district or many Americans across the country and must not be allowed to make medical decisions on their behalf. For all of these reasons, I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 497 here today. I reserve the balance of my time. The